Welcome back to another video review. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the SciTech R Defender GY G17 holster. So I picked this up from my local airsoft shop uh, for $29.95 plus tax, Canadian. And I was looking for something for uh, my WeTech G17. And uh, I'll get into that a little bit later of why I specifically wanted uh, this one. Uh, it comes in this nice packaging, shows some of the different attachments you can get for it. Uh, they label this as their R Defender series and it fits the Glock 17, 22, and 31. And then it does the Gen 1, 2, 3, and 4 of whatever ones that have that. I know the Glock 17 has up to a Gen 4, actually a Gen 5 now. Uh, I don't recall, I've done a previous uh, video, uh, I think this is a new uh, naming system that they're using called R Defender for this style of uh, holster. So let's open it up. So inside the package you get an Allen key and you get the holster. Uh, this is a only comes in black from my understanding so far. Usually that's all SciTac does. Comes with the paddle to attach onto your belt for concealment. And it's a level two retention and it has this button right here for uh, release and locking uh, your sidearm in. All right, so they mentioned that uh, this is made out of military grade polymer on their website. On the packaging, it again says just high tech polymer. I'm not sure if they're changing how they label stuff on their website. I did reach out and contact them about this and they never got back to me about it <clears throat> because they have some of their holsters labeled as for airsoft versions. Uh, then they, as mentioned, this one, they say military grade underneath the profile of it. And then they, on the other ones, it says high-tech polymer. For example, this one was labeled as high-tech polymer for the 1911. Uh, the only differences that I see is the actual back mounting paddle here. Um, that the rubber and the size of it is bigger and more substantial, has more rubber, reaches us to the, more of the edge, as you can see. Thicker rubber, it just seems like a nicer rubber. So maybe that's an upgraded version of that. And that's why they're saying it's military grade. Um, they also say this is good for law enforcement. So anyways, uh, I tested it out. It works pretty good. Uh, there's another different uh, change on this. They do it two different styles on their holsters. They have ones where you unscrew them from the back. And then if you look at this 1911 one, it unscrews from the inside, like going internally here. So when I first got it, I was like uh, curious about how you would attach like a molly attachment because that's what I would be using with this. So anyways, let's unattach it. And while we're at this point, we'll see that it has 360 degrees whatever angle, it has a tooth gear, which is this segment right here. So this allows you to position it at whatever angle you want. If you have one on a cross draw, you can. If you want it on the horizontal, you can. All right, so, <clears throat> As shown in my previous video, this is a molly attachment, so you can attach it to your molly webbing. Inside this, you get an Allen key, you get an extra screw, and you get the Allen key. So, on the previous one, you would just unscrew from here, undo it, take the paddle off, attach the attachment, and screw it back in this way. However, on this one, because you don't have the hole here and it attaches, the screw goes in this way, uh, you have to pop out the nut, which looks like this. And then with all their attachments, they give you this extra screw that would, 
looks a little bit different. So let me pop out the one that's in the paddle. As you can see this one seated in, it's round, while this one's got like an angle, triangle. Also, this one is shorter. Well, they're about the same, but I don't know, it's weird. This is actually too long. This one, maybe it's the way the threading is. I can tell you that this uses a metric six millimeter thread on it. All right, so to attach, you use this screw that comes with the attachment. That holds it nice and tight, works fine. Um, the screw does sit out a little bit and because of the angle of it, um, one of my concerns was that over time I felt that if you kept that on doing it, sometimes I switch my holsters and such. Um, and I've already started noticing it on this that it's starting to push in. So over time if that keeps on pushing in, it's gonna just become loose. So what I did was I went to Home Hardware and I picked up a washer that looks like this. This was just a number six flat washer. And I took a drill bit, I think it was three quarter size and uh, drilled that out. And that way I could use the original screw. Now, if you just use the original screw in the paddle, um, it will be loose, so I'll put it together. I'll show you. Get in there. There we go. So why I want to use the original one is because I like the fact that it seats in there and it holds all the plastic together. But the problem was, as you can see, it's still loose. It doesn't tighten up right away. And... Uh, or the proper way. And if you look on here, you'll see that there's a piece of plastic that sits right into this groove. So it's just more supported. So let me pop this screw out. And I made my own spacer. There you go, nice and tight, doesn't move. I like the fact that now it's flush, it's not sticking out through the webbing and such. I just, and actually when I was thinking about it, a washer would be cheaper than them having to even supply this screw. If they just put that a proper size washer to do this and mount like that, and it would work with all the other systems with the uh, belt loop one, with the drop leg holster, it would work. So yeah, they could just put a washer in and get rid of that screw and then it'd be nice and flush and sit maybe save them probably pennies in cost probably wouldn't bother them that much but i just like it better how that sits in there so that's one of the changes that i did and again just loosen it up and you can put it at whatever angle you want so anyways i'm going to take this off put that to the side now the next thing that I changed on it <clears throat> was the fact that, as you can see, there's this lip. And it's pretty substantial, this lip here. I didn't like it. And on the 1911 one, they had it where it was smooth, and you drew, nothing was rubbing up against your finger. On this one, however, um, it had that lip and it was bugging me when I was practicing. So. What I did was I took a sanding disc on my Dremel and just sanded that down to make it smooth and it, just, it feels a lot better now. So that's one change I would like to be seeing permanently done to this holster is that that lip get removed. It's not needed there and it, it's, it's annoying. All right, so now for the actual fit of using uh, whatever you're gonna be using in it. Uh, G17 Gen 4, tested this, the real steel, works perfectly, no issues, retention's fine on it. Uh, but 
what I noticed was there was a lot of people saying they're having issues with uh, the Airsoft version of the WeTech G17, uh, which is this. And that's because the slide is actually a little bit thicker than the real steel one. So some holsters, they had to sand it out inside or they had to modify it somehow. Um, this one it's a, was a little tight at the beginning, but after use and just kept on drawing it back and forth, no issues. Fits in there perfectly. Level two retention, it's not coming out. So yeah, I was happy about that. I know a lot of people were having issues with trying to buy these type of holsters for their Wetex. Well, the SciTac one fits perfectly. All right, so if you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, have a great day, have a great week, and take care.